please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. I must advise you to please do your own research. All media users found on the public domain and are fair use and fair dealings. Hi everyone, so big, fat, sunny hello from Lanzarote. Normally I wouldn't do any videos when I go away on holiday, but naturally as soon as I do go away on holiday, so much stuff happens and I didn't want to leave it another week before I commented. Now before I start talking about this particular video, some of you may or may not be aware, there is lots of stuff going on on social media to do with a fellow YouTuber, Murky Meg. She has unfortunately had her Twitter account taken down and she is trying to fight against whoever it is that has managed to do that. There are sadly some accusations going round that I am the perpetrator of doing such a thing. Murky Meg has been a friend of mine for a long time and she also was the reason why I set up this channel. So I wish her the best of luck and hope that she gets it um, basically sorted as soon as possible. But for everyone who is trying to pass the accusations onto me, I do not have the power to shut down people's Twitter accounts, YouTube accounts or Instagram Instagram accounts. In fact, I probably couldn't even close someone's Tesco's club card. Another thing I'll squeeze in before the video starts is to do with Chia. You know that she was very poorly. This is my dog and she is doing fighting fit now. It was roughly about a thousand pounds. Don't worry, got pet insurance. A must when it comes to having pets. It turned out after a thousand pounds of tests and an overnight stay that she just had a tummy bug, basically gastro flu, like what we get. So she's back to her normal sprightly self and she is being looked after with a combination of our parents and her favourite dog walker, Dora. She also gave us a nice leave-in present in the morning when we knew that she was feeling back to herself and ripped another hole into the back of the sofa. So let's talk about New York, New York. My me, well, there are so many, so many questions that have been brought up because of this trip. And I'm gonna try and break them down when I can. I'm sure there's gonna be lots of things that I miss. For most of you, you have seen that Harry and Meghan did a three or four day tour of New York. It was like the red carpet was laid out for them. And this has caused a lot of uh, confusion, a lot of questions to be raised. They are not members of the royal family. They're not government officials. They don't represent anyone. And when you think about it, Harry is an ex-prince who has basically just pooped all over his family using Oprah to do so, including the Queen of England, his grandmother, all the time doing these attacks and these assaults on the family that have allowed them to have the platform that they now have, including the millions of pounds, multi-million pound mansions and everything else that that family has given them. But here they are being welcomed to New York like they were still, I guess, trying to be members of the royal family. It was incredibly bizarre and there was lots of things that were very, very bad taste. Firstly, questions were raised why Meghan spent the majority of her trip in huge winter coats and scarves. It was about 26 degrees at the time while she was out in New York. She was seen in scarves, thick coats, long sort of like pantsuits and stuff. And it was really, really bizarre. Now, before I go on with this conversation, I do want to say something here very important to me. I do not agree with fat shaming. There has been a lot of abuse about Meghan and I'm just talking about the cost of the outfits and their fit. The fact that Meghan has or has not put on weight, she has had a baby recently, I think it's very, very wrong. I do not like it when people attack me on my weight and I think that if you're going to talk about Harry and Meghan, you talk about the things that they have done. They give us an abundance of things that they can be criticized on fairly. So just to say, please guys, don't keep posting loads of stuff to do with her weight because I think it's really, really unfair. I don't like it when people call me fat and I'm pretty sure it's a nasty read for Megan herself. So starting off, we had Megan obviously visiting New York, which since the last time that she was there, she had a half a million pound baby shower. The red carpet was laid out strangely by the New York mayor and also the governor. There was a huge police operation. There were photographs of them wearing masks and then not wearing masks. Or rather, Meghan was making sure that she was caught posing for shots, putting on a mask. 
and it's it there's not just harry and Meghan. these are we're seeing this all around the world with world leaders we saw it recently didn't we in i think it was cornwall when the official photographs were being done they all put their masks on and then two minutes later you see them all hugging and, and touching each other and they've done exactly the same here so i find that really really bizarre also in the shot of Meghan slowly putting on her mask, some have said that she's trying to recreate the very iconic picture of Catherine on her way to sadly Prince Philip's funeral. But it's one of the most striking and beautiful photographs I think that are out there of the Duchess of Cambridge. But it's that pinky ring again. Yes, the pinky ring, which has caused so much controversy. Apparently, Meghan has recently said, these are again rumours, who knows if they're true, that she thinks everyone's just jealous because she's dripping in diamonds. That's a typical narcissistic response. But to go to the 9-11 memorial site to be wearing a ring, which has recently been brought into the news due to its connections of dodgy diamonds, from the Middle East. Along with the earrings, you remember, that were gifted to her by the Saudi prince recently after that particular journalist ended up in, well, let's just say several pieces. So for Meghan to be wearing that again, I just, I think there is no, there's no sense of optics there. There's not one part of her that thinks that, I've got lots of jewellery. I can wear any piece of jewellery that I like, which she can. But it was just having a little bit of, I don't know, sense of her surroundings. But when has that ever happened? Lots of people have again been complaining that they've used something that is obviously, I mean, going to the where the World Trade Centers were, you know, the big memorial, and they're posing, they're doing the solemn shots. What were they thinking here with a reef doing their shocked faces? <laughs> But there is so many different um, photo ops that this couple do and they seem to use people, they use tragedies and it's completely inappropriate. Now another thing that is completely inappropriate which has caused a lot of controversy is there was reportedly up to 10 armour plated gas guzzling SUVs with no less than 20 members of their saying that it's actually the Secret Service. Some are saying it's Harry and Meghan's own personal um, security as well because we know that they pay privately. But there were also lots of New York police armed officers. I know in New York that they have guns anyway, but these are the big guns. How many hundreds of really super famous celebrities just walk around New York, go get an ice cream, go get a hot dog, walk around Central Park? These two have turned up with a basically, it looks like the president was visiting really, doesn't it? I mean, that is the number of the amount of security. They had obviously fences, no crowds. Again, I'd like to point out. But it's just unbelievable what was laid out for them. Meghan is nothing more than an ex-soap actress, okay? And that's nothing with me to do with taking a piss out of her career, but that's all she is. She's got her degree in, in, in theater, I believe, and some of it was business, but that was a long, long time ago. Harry was in the army for 10 years. He's got no qualifications. The only reason he got into Sandhurst was because of who his grandmother was. These people do not have an education, they do not have qualifications to talk about the things that they are doing and they certainly shouldn't be having hundreds of thousands of pounds of taxpayers' money being spent on protecting them for a visit to New York or anywhere in the world for that matter. Who do they think that they are? Who does, who does the New York mayor think that they are? To, to literally roll out this much protection for them. It's its insanity. Now, I think I just remembered that I went a little bit off key earlier because I was trying to talk about why is Megan wearing all those big coats? One, I think it is because she literally gets given all these free clothes and she sends them back. That's why we never see them ever again. So what she's doing is people have sent her these clothes and it's actually like the winter line for her to be wearing now. We saw her doing this a lot when she was actually part of the royal family. It's like, why is she wearing a summer dress and no tights and it's still kind of like really, really cold or vice versa? And I think there is that element of she's advertising the kind of next line of clothes that are gonna come in. And then the other reason is it all turned out that it's all for Netflix. Everything that they did, they had their personal photographer, personal vi videographer there with them. It's all being filmed for Netflix. How distasteful is it to film Harry and Meghan posing solemn faces going to the 9-11 memorial? That's exactly as in bad taste as it was with them walking over the graves of US veterans in that LA cemetery, which they shut down to do it. 
Another question for me is when they were seen going to and from meetings, they're carrying around clipboards and iPads and Archie's papa was nicely inscribed on Harry's. Now, Meghan is out there with her own secretaries and aides and it's just this whole thing. It's such a contrived fake thing carrying around a clipboard. Do you remember when Meghan, when she arrived in Australia, she was carrying the clipboards because it makes her look important and official. I'm surprised that she's not actually just started wearing glasses that have actually got no glass in like people do to give them that kind of intelligent edge. Now another thing that's been brought up is how creepy is this? We know Megan loves the references to Diana but why has she turned up to the Carlisle Hotel in New York wearing a near enough identical outfit to what Princess Diana did in 1997? How creepy is that? Harry, oh my gosh, he's married his mother's stalker. It's just weird. Now, one of the big meetings that they had was talking about vaccine equity. Now, this is one of the things that are driving people absolutely insane. Meghan rocked up in four days in pretty much a hundred thousand pounds, or no, sorry, a hundred thousand dollars worth of designer clothes. And she's talking about people spreading the wealth to other countries. Can you imagine how many <laughs> vaccines just one of her outfits might be able to buy a small country? But there are lots of problems. And for Harry and Meghan and, and all these other rich people to keep talking about, they think that all these rich countries are hoarding it. There are lots of people out there that are doing their best. But these, these countries, these smaller countries have actually got to get access to them, deliveries. They need to be able to ship, to be shipped to these countries as well. And Harry and Meghan are just virtue signaling, saying, oh yes, we must. It's like the whole um, Live Aid thing again. It's their version of it. No coincidence that it was called, what was it, Vax Live. It's just nothing more than them being on a stage, on a soapbox with a microphone, pretending that they're important. Listening to the young crowds scream and cheer at them. And if you notice, when you do hear the crowds cheering, they all sound like they're 13 year old girls. Next big thing that came up with the New York visit is why, why on earth did Meghan visit a school in a Santa Claus outfit? It looks like a Santa Claus outfit. It's absolutely gigantic on her. It completely swamps her. And what's worth that outfit alone? $16,000 near enough. And that's not counting jewellery. She'd gone to visit the school in Harlem, which is basically, it's an area that does have extreme poverty, especially this particular school that they were visiting. I think it was like 94% of children, they have their meals provided for them. And I have lots of questions to do with this entire visit. Firstly, Megan goes to read to these kids, right? She's got to read her book, The Bench, to a bunch of, what, six, seven-year-olds. They're all sitting there on the floor, Harry included, sitting cross-legged with the children on the floor showing off his boxer shorts. We should be grateful he wasn't showing off his bottom, his royal bottom crack. But he's sitting there like a child. Why couldn't Megan have been there, I don't know, promoting other books if she was going to do that? You know, you do, you get famous people coming to schools and they, they promote other people's works and especially something that's a bit more, I don't know, better for the age group. That book, come on, the illustrations are pretty, but it was a poem to do with a father and son. And you know, it was a mixed kind of crowd. There's lots of little girls there. And she was reading segments from the book. And to be honest with you, that probably didn't take long to read the book from front to back. But she's just sitting there dripping in thousands of pounds worth of clothes, reading to children at a school like they're some sort of, I don't know, deities or something. It's absolutely shocking. And one of the biggest ones, the red flag for me, is they hugged the children, they cuddled the children. I'm sorry, where is the safeguarding? There are rules in New York anyway to do with the middle of the pandemic that you do not you know, these are people's children and probably a large number of them, if any of them at that age group are actually vaccinated themselves. So they can still pass it on, take it home to their families. But what's worse, Harry and Meghan, because they're rich people, can go into a school and hug your children? I mean, what could possibly go wrong with that? And to top it all off, Megan reading her book, The Bench, in a, what was it, a $16,000 outfit. Do you know what they donated? Two boxes 
of vegetables. Oh, and they're going to buy them a washer and a dryer. Yes, the philanthropists, the humanitarians, the multi-millionaires. Megan, in four days, wearing $100,000 worth of clothes, donated two boxes of veg. Now, they did go along to visit a restaurant. I think it's called the Melba Restaurant, which where they have... They've been doing a massive drive where they've been trying to get in donations uh, to give to the staff that, that work tirelessly throughout the pandemic. And 90% of the donations are going to the staff and 10% goes to another organisation. But it's all to do with obviously getting money back out to the people that have really struggled throughout the worldwide pandemic. But again, this is all well and good when you think, oh, that's really nice of them, $25,000. But the money that they've given is not theirs. It has come through Archwell. It is people that have donated to Archwell that they then give to charities, which is absolutely fine. I am not knocking that, and I'm sure that the Melba restaurant is very, very grateful to receive such a large donation and should be grateful that they didn't just get two boxes of vegetables. But it was all filmed for Netflix. The hugs, the restaurant meeting, the sitting down, the chat, the cuddling of the children in the school. I hope all those parents actually got asked permission. Oh, can you, can I have some rich people come in and hug and cuddle my children and film it for a TV show? Oh, I don't think it probably has gone down well with every parent. And again, safeguarding. Now, I'm going to say something here that's probably a bit controversial as well, because we have got that whole racism thing. And because I'm white, I get called of being racist all the time. But Megan is biracial. But hear me out here, right? Megan has never really embraced being a woman of colour until she married the royal family and she learnt and she could manipulate it to use it to get to a certain demographic of people. Now just say Megan was not biracial. Megan not being biracial, just say that she was white. Harry, white as they come, going into a school and hugging a bunch of poor children. It's got nothing to do with their colour, but just hugging poor children. What is the difference of what they call the white saviour complex, where people like Stacey Dooley, Ed Sheeran, got mad, they got crucified for going out to Africa for comic relief, and there's been demands to stop this, because they talk about this white saviour complex, about going out and hugging poor African children. So what do they think this is, what is the difference with this? Going into a school where it's obviously, you know, poverty is such a huge thing. These children do not have a lot. Their families do not have a lot. And they're going in and hugging them. And they're doing it for a Netflix show. Where is the outrage there? Where are all the woke people going, hang on a minute, you're using poor, underprivileged children that, again, are not your children that you're touching and hugging, which I'm sorry, I think it's inappropriate. But without the media jumping all over it. I mean, there is a video. Um, I can't show it. I don't really want to show it. But there's a clip of, you know, one of the kids. And I don't know. For all I know, he probably went up to Harry and punched him in the balls. Because kids that age, you know, they can kick you and stuff. And that's what I like to think the kid did. But Harry was, you know, playing with the kids. But then he really does shove a kid. Now, Harry is a child himself. And I'm not saying Harry did anything nasty to the child. But my point is, the way it looks, optics are not good when you see other people visiting schools Catherine and William and stuff they're not there cuddling all of the children they're at they work closely with them and they're down on their knees and they're talking to them there might be the odd one but Harry and Meghan seem to make sure that they get the money shot of all of these children hugging them now can you think of any time in history where that later on 20 years down the line these children might not be so happy about that now, I'm not saying there's anything untoward there, but I just can't understand how rich people, they did it when they went to this nursery. Parents were not allowed to go to a nursery to drop their children off at school, to, to cuddle them, especially at that young age when they're upset, they couldn't go in and, and watch them work and play and interact with other children due to the worldwide bug. Harry and Meghan can go in. Harry and Meghan can plant flowers with them, but other parents couldn't do that. Parents of this school probably aren't allowed to go in and mix like that and go in and maybe even hug their own friends' children and stuff. But Harry and Meghan, because they're rich and they donated two boxes of vegetables, a washer and a dryer can go in and hug loads of people's children for Netflix. Where is the outrage? 
Now, the other thing that came up as well is they met with the Deputy Secretary General of the UN. It was reported wrong in the beginning. But to talk about climate change, how can Harry and Meghan, with their little boards and their little iPads, be going into any room with anyone and talking about one of the quality dripping in hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of diamonds and stuff? Just outstanding. But they flew in on a private jet. They flew back home on a private jet. They had a fleet of motor vehicles with them. SUVs, security teams, teams for their staff, for their aides. These, their, their carbon footprint alone just to go to New York for four days was probably more than 10 families over 10 years. Yet here they are talking about climate change to people like they're some sort of global leaders of everything. It is absolutely insane that these people in New York, that the mayor, the UN Secretary General, would give this couple this sort of airtime. And I think it's kind of weird. I just can't see how anyone would want to talk to these two about anything seriously. I don't understand how they're getting this audience that they're getting. Money can buy you anything, I guess. Why are they cuddling children with no parents around? Why are they allowed to cuddle school children? These are not their children. Why are the teachers allowing it? Does that mean any person that wants to make a donation to that school can go in and hug children? What, as I said, could go wrong there? Why are rich people like Harry and Meghan allowed to use the poor communities for such a, for exploitive means? To make million pound documentaries? Why is Meghan wearing all of those winter clothes? If, 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 you know, Harry was wearing wires, I get that. They were filming for Netflix. Surely the fact that someone walking around with a camera might have given that away. Why was she wearing that many layers of clothes? She must have been absolutely roasting. Unless there's potentially baby number three on the way, which I would love for that, <laughs> for the simple fact, <laughs> because they would have to get that award taken away from them, wouldn't they? The environmental people taking the award away because they've had more than two children. As I said, this whole video has been a lot of whys, and I'm sure that you guys are asking your whys, so please feed in the comments. I'm not sure I'm going to do another video after this because I'm trying to stay off social media. I'm on holiday with my husband, trying to work on my tan. <laughs> But I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be back with you guys very soon. But yeah, what is it with this couple? They didn't want to be members of the royal family, but now they do that they're getting paid for it. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye for now. If you like my video, please remember to like and subscribe. Please, angry typists, you will be blocked, so save your fingers for time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.